Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Paint.net. Now this is a free painting application, open source, been around for a very, very long time. And in fact, this used to be one of the first programs I would reinstall on my computer in a fresh install. Now I do say used to because quite honestly, I mostly just get by with the affinity suite of tools these days. Uh, but it is still an excellent program if you're looking for a paint application, not the complexity of like a Photoshop or an affinity photo, but of more complexity than Microsoft Paint, Paint.net is is a perfect fit. Of course, it is also completely free. Now, one of the downsides is it's also Windows only, although I do believe it will run under Wine for Linux users. Mac OS, you've got well, you've got plenty of other options as well. So this is a Windows only product. Now Paint.net 5 was just released. We're gonna take a look at it right now. This is what you see, this is Paint.net. Uh, one of the big things we saw here, and this isn't going to be the most impressive thing you've ever seen, but you'll notice I have selected a chunk of this canvas and I'm going to switch over here to uh, the move mode. And this is in bicubic. And the thing is, this is GPU accelerated. Uh, nothing too extremely exciting to actually show you on screen, but Paint.net, Five, and it started with four, but five went all in on the GPU. So a lot of the effects have been written, rewritten using the GPU. A lot of the things that you would handle are all done with the GPU. So come up here to the settings you're gonna find under the graphics category. Uh, you can use hardware acceleration. Notice that it's using my uh, 3070 uh, as the rendering device. Uh, so this should get you better performance. This also will apply in the effects and so on. And we also have uh, some new effects and tools. We're gonna go into the release notes in just a second. Uh, I've got a couple of other like smaller things. For example, there is now a Cepheid filter, which by the way, I do also believe is GPU accelerated. So you can see it, it's fast and performant, which is quite nice. Another neat thing that we've got going on is let me just go ahead and I'm gonna rotate that. You know, I'm gonna rotate that a little bit more. So we now also have this rotate effect, which actually, if you're using this for texture editing, sometimes the texture source you're using for your edit isn't perfectly lined up. So this is one of those tools that you could actually use. And it is under photo, straighten and what you basically do is well you can straighten photos like so so if you need to straighten something out uh, you can use this new modifier to get it right it's not simply a rotate it's doing more uh, behind the scenes on that level as well again there's a lot at the gpu level if you're using this with a stylus another nice thing here is that there's pressure sensitivity with this uh, and we've got a little bit of work in the world of color profiles not complete but uh, definitely some improvement so here we are on the paint.net blog uh, we'll go through like the highlight features here um, again the big thing is the gpu so the gpu uh, is a big part of this update but we've got plenty of other things going on here so as i mentioned earlier on pressure sensitivity is back so if you're using uh, windows ink a wacom device a surface pen etc uh, you do have um, the pressure sensitivity functionality as you can see here the various different results of different pressure levels uh, you can control a smooth path or an unsmooth path when you're drawing uh, as i mentioned earlier on gpu gpu and gpu uh, so paint.net 4 uh, started moving towards hardware accelerated rendering for the drawing of the canvas on screen uh, 4.1 added a few effects so five uh, support for GPU has been greatly expanded. Uh, more of the UI is using GPU, including layers and history window, uh, ruler, image list at the top, uh, UI for curves and level adjustments. Uh, should also help on battery life. I don't really understand why, to be honest, because generally the GPU is more battery intensive, but hey, I'll take them at their word. Uh, all of the adjustments and effects now use the GPU, resulting in higher performance. Uh, so then on top of that, they're now running full 32-bit precision. Uh, which greatly improves the quality of rendering and the accuracy of colors as they move through the processing pipeline. Effect plugins can now use the GPU for rendering as well and have full access to Windows graphics library, Direct2D, uh, Direct Write, and Windows imaging component. Uh, more on that later. So they also updated the plugin interface. We'll get back to that in a second. Uh, move selected pixels, which we saw earlier on, this guy right over here that is controlling this. Uh, the bicubic section is now um, using the GPU by default. So uh, definitely should be nice. There's there's a new anisotropic um, sampling mode has been added, which uses the GPU. So whether you use bicubic or anisotropic is up to personal taste. Uh, former produces a sharp result, latter produces a smoother or softer result. Uh, you've got GPU configuration. I showed you that in action. So you can pick between which kind of, if you still want to use your integrated, you can use your integrated. Uh, so it does not have a color management system yet, like uh, Photoshop or Krita do, uh, but it does have this uh, embedded color profile uh, solutions to kind of help your image 
images have a color corrected kind of look. So you can see a couple before and after shots of that in action there. Uh, Image.resize updated with new resampling modes, adaptive and lenses. I don't have a clue how to pronounce that. Uh, so that should definitely be nice. We got some new adjustment, handful of new adjustments. So exposure, highlight, shadows, and temperature tint. So if you're working with photos, those are pretty common adjustments in pretty much every photo editing application out there. Uh, and now you're gonna have control over things like the exposure level of your uh, image. Again, I showed you this really quickly. There is now a Cepheid filter built in there. Uh, the st new straightening effect, we saw that earlier on. Again, that's quite useful if you're using this to like acquire tiled textures from an existing source that aren't necessarily perfectly straight. Uh, good choice to you right there. Uh, there's now a built-in drop shadow effect available in the effects object submenu. There's a bokeh blur effect, you can see it uh, way overpoweringly in effect right there. And then the other really big new thing here is there is a new effect plugin system. Now, the good news is it is backward compatible. So all your legacy plugins will continue to work with paint.net, which is impressive because some of those plugins are from like 10 or 15 years ago, it seems, and they still run great. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so new feature, a biggest new feature of the new plugin system is the access to the GPU rendering, but you also get some uh, improvements here because you actually have access to uh, more UI options. So your, your plugins can now, um, affect all the layers across the current image, can access the image's metadata outside of selection, and this one's the big one, can now add tabs to their UI. So it's gonna give you a bunch of UI properties that you can control in your plugins. So between the GPU access, a little bit more information and metadata access, uh, you should be able to make uh, basically better plugins going forward, which is a cool thing as well. Uh, and then improved effect adjustments and so on. So a lot of other smaller changes. There's a lot to this particular release. Uh, one thing to note, uh, Windows 8.1 and 7 SP1 are no longer supported uh, and it is a 64-bit only application. I think this happened a while ago. I think this was in a previ previous release. I don't know how many of you are still in Windows 7 32-bit land. I'm curious if you are and this impacts you, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below because this, this hasn't been relevant to me and oof, I don't know. Pfft eight, nine years now, but I'm curious about you, uh, if, if that's still impacting you. Uh, so you can get paint.net in a couple ways. If you want to uh, help them out financially, you can get it from the Microsoft store or you can download it classically. This is actually one of the things I hate the most about paint.net, uh, other than this image of teeth that I really wish I hadn't scrolled down to. Um, I, I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, but the other cool thing here is uh, the effect system. There are a number of samples that'll walk you through it. So if you want to get started creating your own effects, there is a GitHub page uh, for creating the effects. Effects are all using uh, C Sharp programming language, by the way. So if you're comfortable with C Sharp, here is a sample effect. They're very simple uh, to create. And it's probably why there are as many effects as there are out there. On top of that, he did provide a number of samples that were written uh, using the new Paint.net 5 uh, system. So if you want to learn how to create your own, uh, these are some examples with source code. The repositories are available over here. So if, if you do want to create your own uh, plugins for Paint.net, uh, the new system should give you a little bit more control and uh, yeah, you've got some examples to follow through. So if you want to go ahead and grab paint.net, it's available at getpaint.net. Now this, and this has been like this forever. And I know that they're trying to monetize this in a certain way, but this is just infuriating. Uh, so let's, let's go through the process. So I want to go ahead, I'm on paint.net. I want to download paint.net. How do I get it? Well, I go to the download link. Okay. So it brings me here. So then I've got this choice of downloads. Now uh, I have download here or here. So do I want to download it from the Microsoft store or .pdn? I'll do .pdn. Okay, I get an ad here. By the way, I clicked on the wrong thing there. Uh, so what I want to do is, okay, I'll click here. Now go back, oh crap, I'm back at the beginning. Okay, so what do I do? Oh, I use this banner looking icon to do my download, which then leads me to this page. Now, the funny thing here is what you normally get is a ton of ads that masquerade as download buttons, which makes it even more infuriating. But what you want to do is go over here and click that guy. And finally, you got your download. So it's just kind of like a put your up, put your eyes in front of ads and things, but it makes it such an unpleasant experience. Like this is the people that literally are just getting paint.net for the first time. There's got to be a better way to monetize people because like, this this is just 
a terrible workflow. Uh, but on the whole, a uh, very interesting release. That is paint.net. I will link to uh, the directly to the download link so you don't have to go through that ring and roll. Uh, and also um, to the blog post here if you want to learn more. I'll also have a link to that um, plugins thing. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, this here, this is paint.net uh, now with incredible increased GPU functionality, a brand new plug-in system, um, pressure sensitivity. There's quite a bit in this particular release, a number of new effects, new adjustments, a new Cepheia filter, the new straightening tool, etc. Quite a bit to like in this particular release. So if you are in the market for uh, a simple image editing tool that is not basically MS Paint, so you want something a little bit more so, sort of like what Notepad++ is to Notepad, well, Paint.net is basically that to Paint, and it can do probably 95% of your simple photo work. And as you can see from these releases and from the plugins that are available for it, it can actually do quite a bit more. So it's worth checking out if you never have before. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is paint.net. Five. Sadly, Windows only, uh, but completely free open source. And I'm curious what you think of Paint.net. Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.